Hello, it's Sarah. All right, I'm back, and this section of, of the tutorial is going to be called base coating. So far, we printed out our pattern, got that onto paper, we traced the pattern onto tracing paper, and then using graphite, we traced the pattern onto our based piece, our prepped piece. Um, and so these are ready to go. And the next step is called base coating. And to base coat, I like to use a flat brush. So that's why I had to get hopefully a number eight flat or somewhere around there. Um, these pieces are kind of small. I mean, they're not, there's not large surface to cover. And what, you know, you want to be able to get into nooks and crannies. That's a big word for me, nooks and crannies, I guess. So let's start with the mermaid. I'm going to have you guys get out some colors. I have on my palette. Well, first let me give you a look over here. This is my setup over here. I have my, I'm a right-handed painter. So I have my paint bucket and you guys can have a glass of water. It doesn't matter. I just like these because there's ridges on the bottom and I can clean my brushes easier. Uh, a bucket of water, some type of water surf, um, source. A pile of paper towels, like about three, I think this is three halves of paper towels. And I put that right on my wet palette. And if you don't have a wet palette, I mean, um, paper palette, this is paper. You can, we're going to try using the Tim Holtz thing to float. I'm going to show you how to do that. But this is how I have it set up. And I use my, I use this, you could put your paint right onto your wet palette. You could, I keep calling it a wet palette because there is such a thing as a wet palette. And where did I put that other thing? This. This is actually the lid to my water bucket. It comes with it. But you could put your paint in here. So that's a good idea. Then you just have to keep cleaning this out. I'm a waster, so I throw these out, which is not good. All right, so let's get some paint out and start painting. Like I said, we're gonna, I'm going to use flesh tone for her flesh. I'm going to use red for her hair. And then I'm going to start with the light green for her her body. I'm going to use my palette knife and just kind of stir this around. Can you see me? Yeah. Stir that around a little because it's been sitting in the paint pot. And just take out a nice little blob of paint. And that'll be plenty. I put down a lot and you don't really need that much paint. And then I'm just going to get that off my palette knife and just stick it in the water. That's what I end up, usually I end up with everything stuffed in my water bucket. Okay. So to base coat, what I like to do, and this is why I'm doing this tutorial, to show you what I like to do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Two to three thin coats is what I like to do. Now, that's not going to be, maybe that's too much for some people, um, but I'll tell you why. I like to do that because I'm pretty much known and was known for any class I went to, whatever. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth. Did you paint that? It looks like a decal. That's what everyone would say. And that's because how I prep my surface, it's very smooth. I make sure there's no bumps and ridges. And when I base coat, I'm not glopping the paint on. I'm making sure there's no bumps and ridges as I go. And then when you float, you're going to get an even better um, result. And floating is a tricky technique, and I don't expect you to get it overnight. But that is the, the way that uh, a, a lot of acrylic painters get the shading and highlighting is by fl a technique called floating. So let's just get into this. Let's get, you're going to go into your water bucket and get some water. Now, all right, let me, sh let me show this on camera. And this is what I do every time I load my brush. You're going to do a lot of this back and forth, back and forth, okay? In the bucket and just tap it off. Then you're going to blot. Just push down one side of your brush. So in the bucket, my, I'm going to put my paper towel this way so you can see it. In the bucket, tap it off, blot. That's it. So I just took the drip off the brush, but there's still water in my brush. So you can even see the water drip right on my, hey, they call that the ferrule. Now, when you go into your paint, you don't want to just scoop that paint up and go to your piece. I like to take my brush and pull the paint gently out of that puddle and make a little slicker, wetter puddle right next to your main puddle. And then, I'm, and as I do that, I'm loading my brush. I'm not jabbing the brush. You're keeping it flat on the surface. 
and that is a loaded brush nail. Let's see if you can see that. It's wet, but it's not too wet. <coughs> and if it were, I would go back to my paper towel and blot again. It, there's a little bit of a rhythm to it, and you'll start to get it after you, um, you've done it a few times. Now when I go to the piece, I always put my paint down in the middle. So I get all my bumps and ridges in the middle, and then I work to the edge to keep it nice and smooth. And if you go out of lines a little bit, don't worry, that's what Q-tips are for. And you can always, you can paint right over those lines or butt right up against them. It's okay, let's just paint for a minute. Let's just see what it feels like. Now see, there's a ridge. And if there's a ridge, sometimes I, I'll push it away with my finger. But I'm really never intending to get a ridge. I don't, and I'm still, I have still have plenty of moisture on my brush, so I'm just pulling some more paint out of that puddle. And I'm gonna slip and slide my brush around the surface. So look, so now I'm gonna go back into my, I'm pulling a lot. And look, here's a big area. I'm gonna put all this paint that's on my brush, most of it, down. Put it down and just keep smushing and smushing. Now, just working towards the edge, hopefully I'm in frame, you get a nice smooth, um, what would it be called? Um, ad ad uh, what am I doing? I don't know, it's a smooth, see, and I keep going back over where the paint was, because it's wet. Now that's the thing about acrylics, they dry quickly. And that's why a lot of um, oil painters have struggled with learning to use these because they're water-based, they don't have time to pity pat around in them like they do with oils, but you also don't have to use all the solvents and stinky stuff that oils need. So they wanted to figure out how to work with them because a lot of people were into them and liked what they could do with them. Um, anywho, uh, so look, I still, I'm still just watch me, and I'm going, and I'm just using the brush, all the bristles of the brush, not just the tip. Um, I lay it down. I put that paint down. I, I'm, I'm also turning my piece. You see me turn the piece so that I can get in those nooks and crannies, and using the corners, the corners of my brush the chiseled edges of my brush so that I can get nice crisp lines. That's how I do it. And I've been pretty happy with it, with the results, by using that technique. And some of this, this green actually covers pretty good. I don't mean to yell. I feel like I'm yelling because my voice is so dry. Um, but I think we're gonna add no, I think the flesh tone, I think it'll cover the some of the colors. You know what? The bees, the yellow, we're going to add white. All right, I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so look. So that's that. I'm going to take this brush and stick it in the water. I'm going to grab my number three round and show you. So this is a round. And I was going to say, too, some people base coat with a flat. Some use a filbert, which is basically a flat brush, which is flat, meaning it's flat like this, and then it's... Um, flat this way too, across the top, all right? A filbert, I don't think I have a filbert out, I didn't even take one out. It's basically, it could be, it's called a cat's tongue too, which means that it's just been cut around the edge, so it's like a U at the top. So it's more like, um, it's if you wanna paint flower petals and leaves and things, it's good for that. But I like the base coat with a flat because I can get into those nooks and crannies with it. But for these little areas right here, these two little pieces that are on her, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cut off and come right back. Um, I'm gonna use my round. So I'm going, here we go, we're gonna load this brush. Go into your water, blot. Just put it down and blot. Let the paper, let this paper towel soak the, the water out. Now, pull paint from that puddle. Just stick the tip in the puddle and pull and flatten your brush against the paint. Not just We're not just loading the tip of the brush, you're loading the entire brush. Now we don't need a ton because I'm only doing these two little areas here, but that's how you load your brush. And this is a round brush, so it's not meant to be flat, but you can flatten it out. So if I were gonna do a stroke, I could start on the tip of the brush, push down, 
and come up. So it does what you want it to do. You have to just know how to work with it. So let me get a little more paint and I'm going to come over and just get these little areas that we uh, that I didn't do with my bigger brush. It's just easier when you have a little bit smaller brush. And you know, you're going to get the feel for it. If you go out of lines, we're going to cover up Oh, that's her little fingers. We're going to cover up uh, those bloopers that you make. Don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. Until you're to your final coat, you might want to uh, use a Q-tip. But she's pretty much based. We got her body done. So I'm going to clean this brush, and we're going to go, and we're going to do some flesh tone, because the flesh tone covers a large surface, and I want to get somewhere with this. So I'm just cleaning my brush. You can hear me rake it along the bottom of this water bucket. That's what I like to do because I'm a heavy hand, which means nothing I do really in life is ever gentle. I'm very rough. When I scratch your back, I'm scratching your back. I'm not just, you know, pity patting around. But same thing with my paint. I load this brush up. I don't mess around. I'm not like just getting a little bit, you know, so I really need to be sure that I'm cleaning it when I, when I switch colors. I want to make sure I clean it up nice because I'm only going to work with this one brush so that you guys can see that you don't need a ton of um, tools, okay? So again, I've gone into my paint, tap, and blot. One push down and just let the water soak out of the brush. Now there's still plenty of water in the brush for me to um, make my slicker, wetter puddle next to this puddle. So I'm just sticking my tip of the brush in the paint and pulling back and making a little slicker, wetter puddle right here. I'm loading my brush with paint, paint and water are mixed together. Where that's just paint, there's paint and water on my brush. Okay, so that's fully loaded. It's nice and wet. It's a little gushy at the moment, but it's not drippy. And I'm going to go right into the middle of her face. So I'm going to put this down right in the middle, both sides. You can see the ridges and the wetness there and the slickness, okay? But I'm going to take all those ridges and wetness and I'm going to gently move to the sides, closer to the lines, and then I'm going to smooth and come down my edges. Turn the piece, start in the middle, work my way to the edge, and go up and get that. And I'm very fast, guys. This isn't going to be, you know, this isn't my first rodeo, as Dr. Phil would say. Now, I don't like how I just got her I got I went a little outside the lines here and I want to get the shape back that's all I just don't want to have her have a lump a lumpy face here but that little smudge I don't care because um, when I do her hair I'll fix it so you can always fix and I just have this little piece up here I'm gonna stick the I know I'm in the shadow stick the corner of my brush in there and finish that up now that's one thin coat, but I covered the area. That's all I wanted to do. I'm gonna go back into my water because my brush did feel a little dry. I was, you can feel the stickiness of it. If it's not, <coughs> if it's not smooth and flowing, then your brush may be a little dry and, and sticky. So I'm just gonna go into my water, blot, just gently blot. I didn't push down too hard that time. And now I'm going to go and load my brush again. I'm not going to grab as much paint this time because we're doing her arms and her chest. And it's not as big a surface as the face was. But I'm still going to put my paint down right in the middle of her chest. And walk towards those edges. I have plenty of paint on my brush. Maybe too much, but it's alright. I'm just going to use the brush to fill that space. Now the number 8... I'm just taking some paint off my brush. I had a little too much. I didn't want to make ridges. The number eight is actually the perfect size there for her arm. I just pushed it down a little and let the bristles spread out and it kind of filled in her arm just right. So now I'm doing her little cleavage area here and then I'm just going to set my brush down and pull and it's going to, all that those marks will clear up when we do our second coat. We're gonna, I'm going to go through this whole thing, first coat with you, on camera, get it base coated, 
And then, I don't know, I might do a little bit of the second coat with you, but then I think I'm going to go away and come back with it all ready to go for um, doing the details, for doing some shading and highlight. Now, I'm getting a little sloppy in here. I'm sorry, I'm working around a tripod, and it's a little bit awkward, but I, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my water and grab my little three round and get that little slicker wetter puddle get some paint on there and I can just get into these little areas with this brush much easier she, has, she had a little thumb there or something I think I didn't trace it on right oh and there's a little piece of her finger over here and you you know what the also the the um, line drawing is someone else's rendition of this mermaid you can tweak her and make her however you want this is your piece they sell their um line drawings for you to use and however you use it you're just not allowed to reprint it and and sell it again that's the only thing all right so she's she's very thin coat for her skin tone we're gonna go and we're gonna do her hair I'm rinsing that brush out I'm going to grab my um, number 8 flat again, rinsing it off, getting the other color out, and paint bucket, blot real lightly because we got a lot of surface to cover here with the red, and look at this gorgeous color red, it's so pretty. I'm going to pull a wetter slicker puddle right next to that one, and load my brush. Now some reds are transparent. This one actually I didn't have a hard time with, but you could actually on your initial coat add a little bit of white to any of these colors to get them to be more opaque. And then when you go with your second coat, you'll switch the color back by just going with a straight color. So I'm just gonna put this down right in the center. This is such a gorgeous red, so pretty. Ariel's Maya's uh, favorite princess so I always make my mermaids red hair um, Maya's my granddaughter and uh, she's in England right now hopefully she's coming home tomorrow I'm not sure because of the time difference I didn't get their exact itinerary itinerary but she's probably having a blast she always does. So you can see I'm just putting my brush down. I still have quite a bit of paint, but I'm going to get a little bit more. And I put it down in the middle of the biggest area and then work toward those edges. So keep moving your piece so that you can get the best results that you're going to be able to get. You can leave the little areas for um, your round brush. If you don't feel confident going in there with the big brush, with a bigger brush, save it for the round brush. I'm gonna go and come back. But um, I like the chisel edge of this brush. I like to work with that tip. Now I'm gonna go right in here with my fully loaded brush and just slide it around that little curl. Same thing, slide it around that little curl. I'm coming close to this edge. Let's see what I'm going to do here. I can come down right next to her shoulder with the chiseled edge of my brush and put it down and just swoop up. And there we go. Let me see if I can get this little area filled. And then I think I'm just making sure my the edge of my brush, that chisel edge I keep mentioning, is nice and loaded so when I go into because I'm using that actually I'm just flattening out my brush on this paint and making sure I have paint there and then when I come to my piece I'm just going to take that edge fill it right in with the chiseled edge there so up against her here I could probably use that technique as well I might have just slimmed her made her little slopey shouldered I don't like that, so I take my Q-tip and I spit on it. I don't spit, I just like lick it or whatever. Um, I'm getting red all over her skin now, but 
we're going to do a second coat. So whatever, you know, if there's a little bit of color on there, it'll get covered with your second coat. Don't worry. I've done this lots of times. And try not to get frustrated, too. I mean, if, if it's your very first time painting, good for you. And just try to follow along and don't expect it to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look like mine. It's going to look like yours. It's yours. And, you know, even though there's a line drawing here, I'm taking paint off my brush. I have too much paint. I need to reload. I'm going back into my bucket and cleaning it off. Oops, you can't see that. Tap, blot, and come back to my puddle. Um, you know, I painted a lot when I first started painting. Um, and practice makes perfect. So the more you do it, the better you're going to get, um, obviously, just like anything. You learn little tricks along the way. You figure things out. And um, if you enjoy it, don't stop. It's very relaxing, I find. Um, but you can also do it with other people. So when you're at a class and um, we're all base coating, you know, um, you could be chatting in base coating because there's no direction really going on. Everyone's just getting base coat. A lot of time the base coating is your homework. So you would do this at home. You know, you wouldn't... Um, come to class and base coat generally not not generally sometimes you have to when you go to convention um, you know you get there and, and she'll just give you time to uh, base coat and then hopefully you'll get done at you know whenever she says come back and we'll start doing the details but um I've made tons of things for my home I've painted um, a lot of um, home decor items, you know? Um, just tons. I can't even, I can't even begin to tell you all the stuff I have. Um, we could even come back in there with that, for that curl and do it with a liner brush and really get that nice tight curl. I'm just, I'm just getting you through this, you know, uh, as best we can. And, like I said, it's just not going to be perfect. I'm going to, I am going to grab my liner and just show you the difference. It's a tiny little brush. And usually when you do line work, you get the paint, you mix it with water to the point that it's got an ink-like consistency. That's what, you want to get it inky. But look, I just put a nice point on that curl. And I'll come over here and I'll just try to tweak this one a little, even though I've, uh, already kind of made it thick. It doesn't matter. She's a mermaid. What the heck do we care? Yeah, I don't, I don't ever really try to do real realistic stuff. I've never done realistic stuff. All right. So real quick, my, I have to charge my battery. <coughs> I think my husband just ordered me another one. Thank God. I want to come back and show you um, this flesh color real quick because um, you can see here that it's not opaque at all. You can still see blue through it. So I want to get, I wanted to just show you, I'm rinsing out my flat and I'm going to go back into my flesh tone and I'm going to get uh, a little wetter slicker puddle. See that's starting to get dried up but you can just break through the film and get that wet paint out of there and make yourself a slicker wetter puddle right next to it. So that's what I'm doing. I loaded it up pretty good. I have a little red on my brush figures because I'm a heavy hand and I put it all down right in the middle of her face and I'm painting around my camera so but see here I I got red on her face a little so I just smooched that off fixed it Two coats is going to be plenty for this um, flesh tone. It covers nicely. It's a nice, rich, um, it has opacity. I don't know if that's what you want to say, but it does. It covers nice. I just got a little bit. This is what I keep my Q-tips in. It's just a glass. Keep them at the ready. 
and I've actually um, been using them for if it, if I get globs of glue on my paper crafting or whatever it is, Q-tips just come in handy. But yeah, so that covered. So all you're going to need is two coats on your flesh tone. The red is like basically covered. The red looks really good. So I mean, if you want to do two coats on your red, you can, but maybe just touch it here and there where maybe it didn't come up as uh, opaque. You want it to be opaque. You don't want it to be sheer because we need to um, put some shading and highlighting on here and um, that's actually officially like a third coat I just did. <laughs> Alright, you know what? You don't need to watch me do this. I'm going to cut away and I'm going to go see what I have and I'll be back. Alright guys, thanks for watching.